Welcome tonight, everybody, Wednesday night, Science of Getting Rich, chapters four through six. I grabbed my original book still, and then this other one that I have been reading out of, and sometimes I like to compare. I've been reading out of this one for a couple of years now. That's why it looks like this. Um, but not chapter 10. I just turned straight to chapter 10. Let me find chapter four. <laughs> I'm just obsessed with this book. Obsessed. Oh shoot, I just got my little thing off. Where'd it go? Okay, we'll just do this. Ooh, formless substance. Oh, the first principle. First principle in getting rich. Okay, I'm here in my kitchen tonight because the um, Taylor's in camp. And so I actually get to be like out in the regular house because <laughs> normally I'm like hiding in a bedroom here or a bedroom here because she's sleeping and she has to keep it quiet. So, which is all good. She deserves to have it quiet in her sleep. Chapter four, so the first principle. So I'm gonna look at this book. And I'm gonna look at this one too. So this was my original one from back, the pink, I used to write in pink highlighter um, from back in 2000. No, holy cow, when was that? 2005, yeah, 2005, 15 years ago. All right, so yeah, we did one through three last week, right? I feel like I've, like I've read this so much, so much here lately that it's just like, we already talked about this, but we didn't. So last week was chapter one through three, right? Yeah, we're four through six today. All right. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna make sure I'm highlighting the same things that I've highlighted the same things so I can share this stuff with you guys. So this one, oh yeah, now I remember this. Yeah, um, just from last time whenever I was teaching it. So this is where it kind of gets into like the nitty gritty, like the actual first principle of it. So the first principle is your thoughts is the only, your thought is the only power which can produce tangible riches from the formless substance. The stuff from which all things are made is the substance that thinks. So you guys, a thought form in this substance produces the form. I cannot stress this enough that you guys understand this part of this. This is like crazy that you, like if you can get this, you can get anything. Your thoughts, remember we've talked about monitoring them. Your thoughts, are the only things that can produce riches from the formless substance. And that's the God substance, right? That source, that's everywhere. Stuff from which all things are made. A thought form in this substance produces the form. The things you think about come to pass. And so they may not come to pass immediately, but they will come to pass, okay? And that's super important that you understand that. Original substance moves according to its thoughts and every form and process you see in nature is the visible expression of a thought in original substance. As the formless substance thinks of, of a form, it takes that form. And I'm gonna go over this part like for about five or so minutes here because I need you to get this understanding. And as it thinks of a motion, it makes that motion. That is the way all things were created. So we're talking about creation here. How do you create the riches you want? How do you create the car you want? How do you create the relationship you want? How do you create the house you want? How do you create the clothes that you want? How do you create the vacation you want? How do you create the job that you want? How do you create the bank account you want? Like, are you getting me here on how do you create the things that you want? So you create them by these first two paragraphs. You think a thought, okay? You're thinking things, right? And if you're not for sure what you want, you write down things that you want. Cute little thing. Tonight, Brent's sister came over. Her daughter was in town from Montana. She lives in Montana and husband. And so they came over for dinner and we took Trey and um, some of his friends to Top Golf last night. And so she's like, oh my God, Top Golf. That's on my bucket list. And I'm like, Mm, girl, that's not a bucket list item. That's like a to-do list. I'm in Florida. We're going to go to here shopping. We're going to go eat lunch here. I'm going to go to Top Golf here. I'm going to go to the beach here, but it's not like a bucket list item. And she's like, oh, okay. So bucket list. I'm like bucket list. Well, for me is like Bora Bora, um, Tahiti, you know, um, uh, there's a Ritz Carlton <laughs> cruise line that just got announced that are just start cruising later this year. That's like bucket list things. Um, I showed you guys today, private flying private. We've flown on a private seaplane, but just to the Bahamas. So it's not like technically like flying private. It is, but it isn't, you know what I mean? I mean, obviously there are pilots on there, but I, I got that, um, 
email from Brent this morning about flying private. He was emailed by somebody, hey, if you're interested in flying private, just want to let you know we're starting again. And then I get my tut for the day and it's all about your fr private flight. And I'm like, okay, this is so, right? Like those are bucket list things. But things that you want, like I cannot, you guys, 15 years, I'm not joking, 15 years, I have wanted my own private jet. That's been on my dream board year, year, year. Being on a private jet, owning a private jet, flying private. It's always something I wanted to do. And not in a seaplane, but more private than that, right? One that you can walk around and they've got the bar or they have the, you know, whatever, all the seats that people can face each other and all that kind of stuff. I want to do that. I want to do it. It's something I want to do. And eventually I'd love to own my own private jet, not fly it, but you know what I mean? But you have to think about what you want. You have to write on paper what you want. And that's why dream boards, vision boards, action boards are so important, right? Because you can see it, you can visualize it, right? A lot of us are visual learners. So the thought that you have is the only power which can produce tangible riches. If you're not thinking about getting rich, it's not going to happen. <laughs> if you're not thinking about the things that you want to accomplish, it's not going to happen. If you're not thinking about the places you want to go or the things that you want to experience or the things you want to have, it's not going to happen. You have to think about it first. Those have to be in your mind. They have to really literally like prime example. I'm going to share this with you. So Trey, there's a house we want. I think, I don't know if I've shared that with you guys or not, but anyway, there's a house that we want. And we looked at it uh, back in February, I guess it was, we went and looked at this house and we've talked about it and, you know, on and off and, you know, different things. And then obviously COVID hit, whatever, and they took it off the market. And so it's not on the market right now, but anyway, Trey and I started talking about it again, maybe a couple weeks ago, you know? And so Yep, he keeps, you can feel his energy revving up with it, like he's talking about a lot more. And, and so this weekend we went to Clearwater, we boated up with some friends and hung out up there and then boated back down. And um, I had said something, she asked me on Saturday, she said, um, so what are your, what are some of the things you're wanting to accomplish? Or what are some of the, one of the things you're wanting to, to do? What are you, what, what, what's on your list, your, your goal list there that you're wanting to get? And I said, well, there's this house. I'm really, I'm really wanting this house. And, you know, Trey and I've been talking about this house. She's like, oh, and I couldn't find the address. And Trey, he wasn't available to send it to me on Zillow and blah, blah, blah. So anyways, I'm like, yeah, I was trying to describe different parts of it. I'm like, it just, it's, everything about it's perfect. And so anyways, he sent it to me finally. And on Sunday, we're on our way back. Uh, from Clearwater and she and I are sitting there and I was like oh he sent me the address let me pull this up real quick on Zillow and I pulled it up and I hand her my phone and she scrolls through the 46 pictures and she's like oh my god love, love, love. you know we're talking all about all the different rooms and all the different stuff and you know all the things that the house does and how Trey and his friends and Taylor's part and all this da 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 literally you guys not even an hour later we pull up to um a beach like a an island area and I would get out of, out of the boat and it's what part where you can walk, you know, and the water's like up to your waist or knees and everybody's hanging out in the water and their boats are all around. Who do I walk right up to? My real estate agent, literally that just showed us the house that we were just talking about. And I walk right up to her and I'm like, Hmm, isn't that interesting? And here you are. So I tell Trey this. Okay. So anyway, so Trey, we've been talking about it. We, yesterday we really spent um, some time in the car uh, or two days ago in time in the car, I was taking him to his buddy's house and, pick me back up, whatever, I don't know. And we were talking about really, like he's, he's really good at manifesting what he wants, but I said, buddy, this is a little bigger than anything you've ever manifested. And so we're going to join forces on this. You and I are going to join forces. I said, I manifested the house we live in now to the T 155 million percent of every single aspect of this house. And I told him how I did it and how long it took me. It took me about six months um, to create this exact house, the exact price, the location, the land, everything. And I said, so he's like, well, we're going to make this happen faster. I said, right, two or more come together. My name, it shall be done. Let's get this stuff done. And so I told him about your thoughts and your feelings, the feeling as if it's done, that's the magnet, right? And so, yes, we're going to join forces on this. So yesterday I get home and he's like, text a real estate agent, set up an appointment, talk to the people. The people live in Miami. They're from Indiana. They said they would talk to us. It's right. He's like, like this, like this. And so finally, I'm like, fine, I'll text the real estate agent, text her, da, 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 whatever. So this morning, I'm in the bathroom. When I'm in the bathroom, like putting on makeup or doing my hair, or whatever, for me, that's kind of like a, that's where I get a lot of great downloads from God is because I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. And I'm not really thinking about anything specifically. And then the stuff will come in. So I was like, Oh my God, don't try my Trey. 
look at this, listen to this, da, 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 da. and I start spelling all this stuff out for him and doing numbers and, you know, math and this much and da, 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 and all this kind of stuff. And I said, this, look, you see how this can be easily taken care of? Like the price difference between this house and that house. So he comes out a little bit ago and he's like, mom, I feel like a crack addict. And I go, what? He goes, I feel like a crack addict. I want the house and I want it now, immediately. Can we get on your computer? Can we start doing this stuff? Da, 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 da. And he's like, just like, he's bouncing like this. And I said, I got a Zoom. Just give me a second. We'll get to it. You go sit in the hot tub with dad. We'll come back and we'll do the things we need to do and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, like I told you guys with the phone. Remember when he wanted the phone? Okay, the child wanted a phone. He wanted an iPhone 6. It took him two days to get enough distributors to be considered a Ruby to get the phone. So he's, he was on crack like a crack addict after that phone, after those people. And that's exactly what he's doing to this house. So by next Wednesday, we should have the deal done. Okay. I'm just going to let you guys know that, but it's a thought. <laughs> it's the thought, right? It's the thought. And then it's that feeling, but you've got to have those thoughts. So you have got to master your thoughts and you've got to decide what you want. If I say like, this is the first principle. If, if nothing else is said about the whole chapter, this is the first principle because you have to impress your thoughts onto the formless substance in order to create, which means you have to have that conversation. You have to think about it. You have to visualize it, focus on it. And I'm not saying all day, every single day, but it needs to kind of become like you're a crack addict, right? Like I'm a crack addict for diamond. I want diamond immediately. And it's something, my charts are right here. I want this now, this is going to happen. I'm gonna be in the creative mode. I'm gonna be tapped in the divine ideas that come in. I'm gonna go out ground, I'm gonna journal. I'm gonna meditate, I'm gonna do these different things. And I'm gonna let all these things come in because then boom, when I post something, it's, people are gonna come from all different directions, right? So original substance moves according to its thoughts. Every form and process you see in nature is a visible expression of a thought in original substance. Everything that's been created was from someone's thought. Whether it's a car or a gadget or a bucket or a lamp. What do you guys see behind me? A box, a leash, a picture. <laughs> like it was all a thought in somebody's head at one point in time to make these different designs, right? And as the formless substance thinks of a form, it takes the form and it thinks of a motion, it makes that motion, that's the way all things were created. I hope you guys get that, I really do. So because we live in a thought world, which is part of a thought universe, the thought of moving a moving universe extended throughout formless substance and the thinking stuff moving according to that thought. So formless substance is nature, original substance. It's raw material of all things. It's alive with creative energy, creative, not competitive. You're not competing against me. You're not competing against anybody else. It's being tapped in, tuned in, turned on. It's being creative. It's being in the flow. So when you see me say, woo, we're in the flow, girl. Yeah, you know, Courtney like had her little berry and cool whip thing tonight, right? We're in the flow. Maybe we are, I don't know. Maybe it was in the meal plan, who knows? But we're still in the flow, right? We're still having the same thing. So when you're in the flow with things like that, you know those synchronicities show you that you are in the flow, that you are tapped into that creative mode. So staying there in that sweet spot is where you want to be. Now, listen to this part right here. Your thoughts produce riches or... <laughs> he's walking. He has a towel on. Thank God you have a towel on. He's walking from the hot tub in his towel. <laughs> Trey's going the other direction in his towel. Everybody has a towel on, we're safe, okay. Uh, you guys ever hear about those Zooms where people end up getting naked or they go pee or pfft, having sex and you're like, hello, were you not realizing you were on video? God forbid, I've seen some crazy stuff. All right, so your thoughts produce riches or your thoughts produce poorness. It depends on your thoughts. So every thought of form held in thinking substance causes the creation of the form, but always, or at least generally, along the lines of growth and action already established. Along the lines of growth and action. Along the lines of growth and action. Things are created along the lines of growth and action. Your growth right now, you're growing yourself, you're reading, you're meditating, you're journaling, you're grounding, you're staying connected to like-minded people, your growth and your action. The action you do in your business, not the post you throw on Facebook, but the actual income producing action, 
right? The virtual parties that you hold, the Zooms that you hold, the private messages, the conversations that you're having with people, the one-to-ones that you're having. You can go meet people now, right? Get out of your cave and go meet some people. Set up those one-to-ones, meet them at a park, meet them at Starbucks, have play dates, have adult dates, whatever, but get that action moving. That's the lines that your riches are created. So a person is a thinking center and can originate thought. All forms that a person fashions with his hands must first exist in his thought. He cannot shape a thing until he has thought the thing. You can't be diamond until you've thought about diamond. You can't make a million dollars until you've thought about making a million dollars. It has to happen. The dream board, the action board, vision board, whatever you want to call it, is key. It's key. It is so key to your success. Print some stuff off, get some magazines, cut some things out, write some things down. Brent actually does magazines. He does actual printouts of pictures and he actually writes things on his for the whole year that he wants to accomplish. And he hangs his like in the bathroom. We have a, you know, a, a um, where you keep your towels, whatever, linen closet. And so when you open that door, his dream board is hung right there. Now mine, I keep mine hanging on the bathroom wall right next to where I get ready. So as I'm blow drying my hair, I'm looking at it, or as I'm brushing my teeth, I'm looking at it, or as I'm applying dry shampoo, because I haven't washed my hair in three days, I'm looking at it, whatever it is. I'm looking at that dream board several times a day, washing my hands, I'm looking at the dream board. So number one, all right. Oh, I love this part. Okay, so this part where it talks about when a person has a thought form, he takes, make, he takes material from the forms of nature and makes an image of the form with his mind. People have so far made little or no effort to cooperate with formless in, in intelligence, to work with the father. The individual has not dreamed that he can do what the thought he seeth the father do. An individual reshapes and modifies existing forms by manual labor and is not given attention to the question of whether he may produce things for formless substance by communicating his thoughts to it. So people have been trained to believe that I have to work this many hours in order to get this money and that's it. I really, how many times have you heard people say, there's just not enough hours a day, I can't get it all done, I can't work that many hours to produce the money, this is all I get that tells you that they are not working with God in a certain way to create what they want. Because this, this is infinite. There is no limit to the creative source doing things a certain way. People don't think they can work with the father. The individual doesn't think that he can do what he sees the father doing, but you can. You can do that if you let go of the old beliefs and the old thoughts and the old programs and be open to this. So they propose to prove that you can do so, that any man or woman can do so. And this is how. So the first step, make sure you guys have this marked in your book. We must lay down three fundamental propositions. First, we assert that there is one formless substance or substance from which all things are made. This is the God substance, which all things are made, right? One. And this stuff is thinking stuff. A thought held in it produces the form of the thought. Thought in thinking substance produces shapes. Things you think about are produced. Are you thinking about the number of customers that you're going to help become healthy? Are you thinking about the number of distributors that you're going to help make an extra $300 this month? Not once or twice or maybe the last five days of the month, but it is something that is on your mind on a daily basis. Have you determined how many customers you're going to sign up between now and Sunday? How many people are you going to help get healthier between now and Sunday? Two, 10, 20, 50? It's up to you. You decide, right? And I'm not saying, oh, well, you need to be realistic. Like realistically, I'm probably only going to sign up three. Why would you not shoot for 30? I mean, what are you doing between now and Sunday that you can't spend a couple hours a day? Not on Netflix, not watching TV, not scrolling news feeds, not watching YouTubes, right? Your time is important. And what you give your thoughts to will create. They will produce what you are focusing on. So 
there is a thinking stuff from which all things are made and which is its original state permeates and penetrates and fills the inner spaces of the universe. So a thought and a substance produces a thing which is imaged by the thought. A person, which is you, can form things in his thought and by impressing his thought upon formless substance can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. He can prove these statements without going into details, he can answer both by logic and experience. I can as well too. So again, if one person gets rich by reading this, then anybody else can as well. I'm one person right here. It's funny tonight, my sister-in-law being here, she said we were um, here in the kitchen and I was, I just made some fresh guac and she was making her cauliflower rice um, dish that she was doing. And she said, I just, I want to stop and tell you, thank you. And I'm like, I just made some guac girl. It's all good. <laughs> and she's like, no, I, I want to tell you, thank you. Because starting back in Arbonne, 15 years ago, she said, I have learned so much from that first experience from you, from all of this, everything, every, every book you've told me about every, everything. Cause she's my sister-in-law that was here tonight is the one that her kids were going to the babysitter that introduced her to Arbon. So my sister-in-law, who is now 50, <laughs> her kids, when they were little, 15 years ago, were going to this babysitter. This babysitter was the one that introduced her to Arbonne, that she had, my sister-in-law had the party at her house. I bring my, my literally at the time, Trey was six months old, my six month old, and Taylor wasn't even, I don't know what, two, she wasn't even two. And I bring two years old, a little over two years old. Yeah. Not even two. No, she wasn't two. They're 22 months apart. So anyway, she wasn't even two. So I bring them to her pool and there's a party out, you know, a, an Arbon party. And that was the night that I was like, okay, <laughs> they're going to do this as a business. Brent has a younger sister too. And she was going to do it too. Her kids, um, she had one daughter that was um, Taylor's age. So she was almost two also. And that was it at the time. And they were like, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to make money. We're going to replace our incomes. And I'm thinking if they're going to do this and replace their incomes, I can do this, replace my income. I'm not going to sit back and watch somebody else do it and not even give it a shot. I want to be home with my kids. I want to have freedom and flexibility. I want to make, I want to have a white Mercedes out in the garage, right in the driveway. There, there were three white, white Mercedes lined up out there and I didn't even want a white Mercedes, but I was like, I want a white Mercedes because that meant that you were making X amount of dollars. And then I was going to be able to replace my income. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this too. There's no way I'm going to not do this. And so from that tonight, we were talking about the different books we've read. And I said, you know, on Wednesday nights, I said, you guys have got to be gone by about 30. I said, because I teach a zoom at nine o'clock. And I said, do you remember the first book that we were introduced to? It was the science of getting rich in Arbonne 15 years ago. And I said, she looked at me kind of puzzled. And I said, Michelle, she used to be a school teacher. And I said, they told us to read this book and read it over and over again until you got rich. Did you never read this book? And she would just look at me like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I was like, because she continued teaching literally up until just like three or four years. And um, she got, she did well with it, you know, for a while there. And then just life and different stuff with her kids. And she got out of it. And um, obviously with everything Taylor, life happened, right? And then here comes, it works 10 years ago. And so um, she was like, no, I don't even remember that book. And I'm like, oh, girl, I've read that book hundreds and hundreds of times. I'm still teaching on that book. And she's like, man, all this stuff, all this stuff. It all came from the start of it came 15 years ago from that company. So many things, so many things that have happened. It's just so cool. And she was like, I just want to say thank you. I'm like, well, you're welcome. Thank you, girl, for freaking having the party for your center. Because <laughs> otherwise, where would I be? And that's just like, I know, where would we be if we didn't know about this stuff, if we haven't read this stuff, if we hadn't been to these seminars and these conferences and these workshops, and we started rattling off all the people, you know, Jack Canfield and John Maxwell and Michael Klaus and Eric Weimeyer and all these people and all these places we've been to. So super cool. So number one, here we go. Number one, is a person's way of doing things is a direct result of what he thinks. Okay. So I've said that 5 million times, but I'm, I'm saying it again, because somebody's not getting it for some reason. Again, you guys remember me from last time being like, sometimes it just like doesn't stop until you get it. So to do things in the way you want to do them, you will have to acquire the ability to think the way you want to think. And this is the first step toward getting rich and to think what you want to think is to think truth, regardless of appearances, think truth. So there's your bank account right? But you have to think truth. And truth is 
it's you're abundant and there is abundance for you. You have to believe in that truth. That money is there. When you are at that energy, when you are thinking that certain way, when you are doing the things, the action, when you are staying connected to this source, this substance, this creative power, this formless substance, that money will show up there. And that's one thing I was telling Trey, I said, you don't get to pick because we were talking about different ways, different money, move this, do this, da, 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 you know, for this house and stuff. I said, you don't get to pick. You don't pick. God picks. Who are you to define the limits of the things that he can create? And he just kind of looked at me and I said, you're powerful. I understand that. But he is the most powerful of all. And he will make things happen where there would be no way for it to happen any other way. You have to give space for that. Your job is to have the feeling as if it's already done, the excitement, the energy, all of that, because that's that magnet that draws it in, in gratitude as if it's done. You have your thoughts, you have your feelings. The feeling is the magnet that draws it in, but don't try to define the how. Don't define the how. This house that we live in right now came from a friend that said, hey, there's a house, a floor plan, I think would benefit from you. Why would we ever go to this random guy that's a friend, you know, he's a friend, but not like a super close friend, you know, but he was like, hey, I saw this floor plan, I was thinking about you guys, it looked like the perfect house for you. Brett ran over to check it out, the, mo the model home, and boom, it was exactly the house we wanted, the exact house that I had been writing and journaling and grounding and focusing on with everything that I wanted, the right price, the right line, the right everything. Why would I try to define where it came from? It came from that random person that God sent to say, hey, go do this. This is perfect for you. And literally within 48 hours, this, this place was reserved, done, psh, gone, and started the build process. So you don't define the how, right? But you have to believe in the truth that it's there. It is there. It is there. You have to believe in that truth. Even if you can't see it, you don't define it, you know it's there. That's that faith, right? So every individual has this natural and inherent power to think what he wants to think, but it requires far more effort to do so than it does to think the thoughts which are suggested by appearances. I'm broke. I'm not enough. I'll never have that. I can't do that. I won't have that lifestyle. That's only for certain type of people. I wasn't raised that way. My family doesn't do this. People won't like me. No one, everybody will think I'm selfish. They'll think I'm materialistic. You know how many times I've had people tell me, gosh, you seem awful materialistic. Like you always want to go places and do things and have things. And I'm like, I enjoy things. Remember God's fullest expression is through the enjoyment of the things that you do, the places you go, the experiences you have, the things that you have. That's how you experience, you experience joy. He experiences joy. If you're not experiencing joy, you think he's experiencing joy with you? No, <laughs> it doesn't work that way, right? So to think according to appearances is easy. To think re truth, regardless of appearances, is laborious and requires the expenditure of more power than any other work we are called upon to perform. That right there is huge. To think truth, regardless of appearances, requires the expenditure of more power than any other work we are called upon to perform. There is no labor from which most people shrink as they do from the sustained and consecutive thought. Hence why you have 1% of the population that is the wealthiest. The top 3% of the population hold more money than the other 97% combined. The top 3% of the wealthiest people in the world hold more money than the other 97% combined because it takes right here the thought, sustained and consecutive thought. It's the hardest work in the world. How many people do you know that perform manual labor day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out? Maybe they're broke, maybe they're paycheck to paycheck, maybe they're barely getting by, or maybe they have just enough to cover just enough. But are they in that top 50%? Are they in that top 10%, that top 3%, that top 1%? It's the hardest thing, hardest work in the world. This is especially true when truth is contrary to appearances. Bank account versus what you want. Vacation on the dream board versus what actually happened or hasn't happened yet, right? Every appearance in the visible world tends to produce a corresponding form in the mind which it observes. This can only be prevented 
by holding the thought of truth. So, truth. There is no poverty, there's only abundance. If I say that just now, truth. There is no poverty, there's only abundance. What went through your mind? What thought just ran right through your mind? Amen, sister, heck yeah, 100%. Or was it, mm, yeah, not for me. Maybe you, you're in that situation. I'm not. Truth, there is no poverty. Oh, yeah, well, just look around. <laughs> Hello, there's poverty everywhere. What was going through your mind? What were you thinking? Truth, there is no poverty. There's only abundance. What goes through your mind when I say that? Do you believe that or do you think I'm full of crap? There's only abundance. Are you choosing to be in the energy of abundance, to stay in the mindset of abundance, to see truth? The truth is there's only abundance. But most people see the appearances and they focus on the appearances and what you focus on expands. What you focus on, you get more of. You focus on shit, you get more shit. You focus on drama and chaos, insanity, craziness, you're gonna get more of it. The thing is, I've said this to you guys before, life's a boomerang. What you put out, you get back tenfold. You just don't get to pick how it comes back. That's a law of reciprocity. You don't pick how it comes back. So if you focus on truth, if you focus on abundance, if you focus on those divine moments, being tapped in, tuned in, turned on, if you focus on all of the synchronicities in life, what are you gonna get more of? So what you focus on expands. If you focus on the abundance, you'll get more abundance. If you say, I'm today, there's truth. Truth is abundance. I'm going to choose truth. And you stay connected to the truth. You read your book, you listen to your audios, you do your journals, your meditation, your grounding, you're talking to people. You're not pushing people. You're staying open and connected. Who can I serve? Who can I add value to? That's what's important. This part right here, I love. This is, this is huge, you guys. And I know I'm spending a lot of time on this chapter because I feel like for some reason tonight, it's super important. Here we are, 35 minutes later. This chapter is so important for some reason for the 14 of you that are on here. I do not know, but God does. So that's all that matters. I'm just listening. So to think health when surrounded by appearance of disease or to think riches in the mindset of appearances of poverty requires power. But whoever acquires this power becomes a mastermind. That person can conquer fate and can have whatever he wants. This is huge. Whoever acquires this power, and the power is to believe in truth, to believe in truth in the midst of appearances of poverty to believe in truth of health, health in the midst of disease. So to believe in truth, whoever acquires this power becomes a mastermind and that person can conquer fate and can have whatever he wants. The power can only be acquired by getting hold of the basic fact, which is behind all appearances. And that fact is there is one thinking substance from which all things are made. It's the thing that I tap into. It's the thing that Trey taps into. It's the thing that Brent taps into. It's the things that you can tap into. I'm no different than you. I've just been tapping into it. Maybe longer, right? 15 years. Now I've been tapping into it a lot longer, you guys. When I was a kid, I used to go into the woods. I'd hang out in the woods. We had six acres, three woods and three that was land. And we had a baseball diamond and two gardens on that three acres and a house. And we lived out in the country. And I'd go into that woods and I knew, I knew there was so much money. I knew there was just, I just felt so expansive and so abundant out there as a kid. And my grandmother used to tell me, says, you can have anything you want, anything you want. And grandmother will float you alone if you need. And she'd pull a dollar out of her purse. <laughs> a dollar. A dollar can buy everything back then, right? I don't know what I mean, like a dollar store. It was like the penny store, you know, but you can buy everything with a dollar. And I'd take that dollar and I'd go to the little um, Burdette swimming pool 
and they had a little gift shop and had this little necklace with these little charms on it. And they were plastic, you guys. This was like 1982 or something. And they were plastic. That was the best thing in the world, right? I knew there was enough money to buy the things I wanted. I always knew there was enough money to buy everything I wanted. And when it came time that I needed some new clothes, well, grandmother would take you to the mall. We'll get you some new clothes. Okay, let's go. There was a store called Pasta, a clothing store for girls called Pasta. That's so weird. But anyways, I love getting clothes there. We used to tight roll our little pants and our jeans and all that stuff. You know, I say little because back in high school, you know, it's little. <laughs> but Anyway, I feel like I'm not, I was, I graduate. I, the same way I weigh right now that I graduated, I feel like I'm so much bigger, but anyways, it doesn't matter. But I feel like I was tiny back then. You know how when you're little, you feel like you were little, you know, like I feel like I was so little as a little kid. All about your thoughts and your belief despite the appearances. And we weren't poor, we didn't have, my dad had a, a great job for the union. It was a Boilermaker building power plants. My mom was stay at home mom. So we weren't starving or anything like that, but I still knew there was so much more than just that. I knew the money tree, I told you that. I knew the money tree, that pear tree had money on it. I knew it did, right? There was an abundance. I had a feeling in me like that. And I'm grateful for that feeling that I had. And I kept that feeling with me and I worked. I started working at 12, I was babysitting. I'm making my own money, I'm gonna get the stuff I want. Had my first full-time job at age 15. I was working at the little Burdette place, you know, as a little slide guard, telling people to go down the slide. Then I got the job at the mall. As soon as I got my license at 16, I'm getting the clothes I want. I don't know that I made any money, but you guys, I was 17. I moved out of that house and I was independent. I was on my own, paying for my own school, paying for my own um, clothing, my own everything, every, you know, apartment, the whole nine yards. So I knew the money was there, but I had to put forth the action. You have to give God something to bless, right? but the money was there. I knew it was. So then we must grasp the truth that every thought held in this substance becomes a form. Everything you think about will become a form. If you can hold that thought, hold, he says, held in this substance, hold the thought in the form so that you can press the thoughts upon it to cause them to take form and become visible. Hold the thought in the form. He doesn't say like whimsically think about it every once in a while. It's got to be something that you hold in your mind, right? Like I held this house in my mind. I circled this part and said, reread. When we realize this, we lose all doubt and fear for we know that we can create what we want to create and we can get what we want to have and we can become what we want to be. As a first step towards getting rich, you must believe the three fundamental statements given previously in this chapter. In order to emphasize them, he's going to repeat them. Do you guys, I'm going to reread this because I said reread this. Like I wrote, re read let's see my marks when we realize this we lose all doubt and fear when you realize that every thought held in this substance this formless substance becomes a form and you can impress your thoughts upon it to cause to take form become and become visible things when you realize this you're going to lose doubt and fear the doubt and fear is what stops the process when you're like i'm going emerald and then you start to doubt and then you don't do something for a day or two, or maybe you post something, but you don't talk to people, you don't interact, or maybe somebody says something, you know, maybe your family member or spouse or somebody's like, oh, whatever. I mean, and then you get your check and you're like, oh, gosh, I'm a Ruby and I only made like $380. How am I going to get to Emerald? How am I going to get to Diamond? And you start to doubt and question and worry and wonder. You stop the whole process. <laughs> Fun. Okay, great. Well, now's a new moment. Okay, you ready? <laughs> so when you, when you, Realize this, that truth above appearances, you're going to lose all doubt and fear. And you will know that you can create what you want to create. You can get what you want to get. You can have what you want to have. And you can become whatever you want to be. That is the first step right there. You have to believe these three things. I'm not going to read you it again. Read them to you again. But basically, I'm in this chapter with the last sentence. Simply take them on trust. Don't ask why these things are true or speculate how they can be true, but take them on trust. The science of getting rich begins with the absolute acceptance of this. Those three things, the thinking stuff, da 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 thought and this substance, da da da, da person can, from his thoughts, da 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 da, da those three things, you have to accept them as absolute truth. That's what he says. That is right there, the absolute acceptance of this, you have to take that on trust. That's how this begins. Take that as truth. Today's a new day. Tonight's a new night. Take it as truth. Okay, so chapter five. The intelligent substance, which is all and in all, which lives in all, lives in you. 
and is continuously living substance. God lives in you. I don't know if you guys have heard that before, but that's truth. God is you, in you, in me, in all of us. It's all one, all substance, all in everything, in every plant, every living thing. It's consciousness. God is there in all of us. Every living thing must continually seek for the enlargement of itself because life in the mere act of living must increase itself. This is about improving your life. Every desire is the effort of an unexpressed possibility to come into the action. It is power seeking to manifest, which causes desire. Every fact we learn leads us to the learning of another fact. Knowledge is always increasing. How many of you guys have been to conference? How many of you been to other workshops, been to other um, intensives, other um, educational programs? How many of you guys have been to other things to further your knowledge, your experience, your education? In order to know more, do more, and be more, we must have more. We must have more things to use, for we learn and do and become only by using things. We must get rich so that we can live more. The desire for riches is simply the capacity for larger life seeking fulfillment. Wanting more money, seeking a fuller life. It is life seeking fuller expression. That is innate in all of us. I don't, people do, but I'm just, just saying. Do you sit around and be like, nope. I'm good. Don't want anything more. Don't want to go anywhere. Don't want to experience anything. Don't want to have anything else. Good with the clothes I've got on my back for the next 80 years. Perfectly fine. This car should last 80 years. This house should last 80 years. I don't have a desire to go on any vacation, nor do I even need a new pair of shoes. You see what I'm talking about? Like that's not normal. Normal is to say, I would like these new things. I would like to go here. I would like to experience this. I would like to travel there. I would like to be able to read this, learn this. Do you realize that um, things cost money? <laughs> Books cost money. Programs cost money. Places to go, vacations cost money. Even if it's, I wanna go camping, you need to get there. <laughs> Are you going to walk to the campground in Montana? I don't know. Maybe that's your life's work is to spend the rest of your life walking across the country. I don't know. But I'm just saying, think about that. You, you are here to increase and to grow and to learn and become. It's the desire of God that you should get rich. He wants you to get rich because he can only express himself better through you if you have plenty of things to use in giving him expression. He can live more in you if you have unlimited command of the means of life. Everything is naturally for you. Make up your mind that this is true. Again, it's here. Make up your mind that this is true. You must want real life, not mere pleasure or sensual gratification. Life is the performance of function and the individual really lives only when he performs every function physical, mental, and spiritual. If you've heard this before, we've talked about this. We need all. We need physical things in our life. We need things to experience physically. We need clothing, obviously, right? We need things that we are eating and drinking that are amazing, right? We need food. We need um, experiences going to a restaurant, right? Things to new foods you want to try. Maybe it's that new bottle of wine. I don't know if you guys saw, I posted on my story. Has anybody ever tried this Lamborghini wine? It came across my newsfeed. I was talking to Trey a couple of weeks ago and I said, we were talking about my next vehicle and I really, I love my vehicle. It's paid for. It's perfectly fine. It's super awesome. But it has 45,000 miles on it because I drive a lot. And so whenever it gets closer to a hundred, I'm going to get rid of it. So in the next year, year and a half, it's going to hit the happy trail. And so I said, my, the only other two SUVs I would want would be a Maserati or a Lamborghini. And so it wasn't even a week later and boom, I see a Lamborghini, um, SUV and I was like oh isn't that interesting I've never seen one of those around here and so you know you see Maseratis usually I don't want to say daily but usually 
cars, not many SUVs. I've seen a, maybe a handful of SUVs, but I usually see Maserati cars on a regular basis. Of course, my neighbor has one, so <laughs> that's probably a part of it too. But then this past weekend on the boat, um, I'm pop up my Facebook and I'm like, oh my God, does that say Lamborghini wine from Italy? We were just talking about Italy and I was like, oh, how perfect. Lamborghini wines. I show her. I'm like, I need to get some of that. I've never tried them. I've never even heard it. I didn't even know the Lamborghini family has a vineyard, one vineyard in Italy. Of course they do. So let's just try their wine. So experiencing these things, right? Just experiencing things. Then mental pleasures, mental pleasures of the mind, knowledge, things you're going to learn to grow your mind and then soul. So you don't want to get rich just for the soul, for the good of others, to lose yourself for the salvation of mankind. The joys of the soul are only part of the life so that they are no better or nobler than any other part. God wants you to get rich for all the things, for the mind and the body and the soul, for the physical, mental, and the spiritual. He does not want you to sacrifice yourself for others to secure his favor. He requires nothing of that kind. What God wants is that you should make the most of yourself for yourself and for others. And you can help others more by making the most of yourself in all of these ways. Make the most of yourself by getting rich. Intelligent substance will make things for you but it will not take things away from someone else and give them to you. You have to get rich by the creative mode, not the competitive mode. You are becoming a creator, not a competitor. We are not competing with other people that live in your city, live in your state, live in your neighborhood. You're not competing with others. You are here to live, stay tapped in into that creative mode. Riches secured on the competitive plane will never be satisfactory nor permanent. To become, remember, if you are to become rich in a scientific and certain way, you must rise entirely out of the competitive thought and arrest and stay arrest in the creative moments. Know that countless of millions of dollars worth of golds in the mountains of earth have not been brought to light. Obviously, this is back in 1910. So countless and countless, of, and probably still there, right? So know that it's still there. Know that the money you need will come to you, even if it's necessary for a thousand new men to be led to the discovery of the new gold mines or whatever idea it is. But never look at the visible supply. There is no limit to wealth when you're in the creative mode. If you're competing, you will be limited. You want to stay in that creative mode. That's the journaling, the grounding, the meditating, the audios, the reading. That keeps you in that creative mode. Never look at the visible supply. Look always at the limitless riches in formless substance. And know that they are coming to you as fast as you can receive and use them. As fast as you can receive and use them. Are you open to receive God's abundant riches? Ask yourself that question. Are you open? Am I open to receive God's abundant riches? Am I open to live an abundant life? Am I open to have an unlimited amount of income coming into my bank account for multiple ways? Am I open to receive that money? Am I open to receive that experience? Am I open to receive that knowledge? Am I open to receive the gifts from God? You have to say yes to those questions if you want to get rich. And if any of those parts and or any other question you thought of, I don't, I, I'm not reading them though, I just made those up. But <laughs> you have, if you say no, I'm not for sure if I, how I feel about that. You're going to need to really think about that, meditate on that, pray on that, ask for help in that situation because you need to answer yes. Yes, I'm open to receive all of God's abundance. Bring it to me. All of it. Yes. Bring it to me. Why not you? Why not you? Why not you? Why not you? Why not me? Why not all of us? Of course. Why not? God's for us. Abundance is for us. Truth is for us. Truth despite appearances. 
it's a frequency, it's an energy, it's a vibration, it's tapping in to the formless substance in an abundant truth mindset that you can have all of this. Limiting doubt and fear. When you eliminate the doubt and fear, it's there. I'm not any different than anybody else. School teacher, hello. <laughs> Wee, great. <laughs> right? Mama, too. Woohoo. <laughs> From Indiana. Yay. Drove a 1979 Cutlass Supreme as my first car. Threw that baby right in the ditch two months after I got it. Woohoo. Like, what's so different about me? I just made a decision and I've never stopped in that decision to become more, to learn more, to know more, to do more, to experience more. Because you only live by example, right? The things you do, yeah, cut with Supremes, <laughs> I know, with the cassette player in it, yeah. What was it, who used to sing Life is a Highway? Who was that, was that Michael Bo? I don't remember. Life is a Highway, I remember playing that on the way down to Florida, go to Panama City Beach, twice a year, every year. As soon as I got my license, 16, bye! My parents were like, what? Remember there were maps? Any of you guys on here are old enough? Joellen, I know you are. There were maps, you know, like those big things you would buy. And the, the states were in alphabetical order. Now, if I'm going from Indiana to Tennessee, they're not on the next page. <laughs> You'd have to like, oh my God, we're driving down the interstate. What exit did we take? I don't know. Get to the T. Get to the, get to the K. Oh my God, I'm in Kentucky first. Get to the K. Now, where's the T? Oh my God, now we've got to go to the A for Alabama. How do we know if this road lines up to that road? What exit do we go on? Oh. Oh my God. But you know what? I had a desire for more. I had to get to Florida. I had to get to that beach. I had to get to that ocean. I had to stay from the, ho the hotels were like, no, I had Tom Cochran. Yes. Thank you. I had to get to that house. I wanted the house on the beach. So sure enough, my senior year, it only took me one year. I was like, I'm over the hotel thing. We got to girls. We got to get it together. We got to make some more money. We got to have to have the house on the beach, right? We had the house on the beach. Yes. Now we're going. Now we're moving. Now let's go to the condo on the beach. Let's go to the penthouse on the beach. Now we're going to do this. We're going to, oh, we're not going to, let's, let's fly, <laughs> right? So it's increased wanting more, desiring for more. Yes, maps. God bless the maps. All right, you guys. So we're going to finish this up here. In the next couple minutes, um, because this chapter is not super long, chapter six, how riches come to you. I can sum it up real quick. Add more in value to people than you take in return. This should be so apparent to you guys through your social media. If you're building your business on social media, it is about you living your life, obviously, not airing your dirty laundry or bitching or complaining or all the craziness going on out there, right? But keeping your page real to you, who you are, your interests, your likes, your activities, things that you're doing, showing people your life, but also inspiring people. We talked about before, because of this business, because of what I do, this allows me this. Because of it works, I'm able to put gas in my tank all the way to the top until it clicks on its own. Because of it works, I'm able to put my kid in summer camp, right? Taylor started camp this week, $650, $650 per week. She's going seven weeks. I don't know what the math is on that, 650 times seven. That's out of pocket expense for us, for her. It's for her experience. She's having the time of her life. So, I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> awesome. Add value. Okay, so add value. Add more value to people. Share things on your social media that are going to inspire people. Because of it works, I can pay six fifty per week and not even bat an eye for my daughter's camp. Because of it works, I was able to move to Florida. Because of it works, I can buy my son a car. Nobody has a car payment in my house. So because of what you're doing, start with the small things. You know, because if it works, my products are paid for every month. I get a commission check every month that pays for my products. So I'm getting healthier for free. Because if it works, I'm able to help other people get healthy because of, and so you know what I'm saying? You're adding that value. You're sharing with people things that are happening in your life. And then you're also sharing other things with them that are going to help them improve their life. So think about that. 
what would you, what could you, and I don't mean sharing a page, a post from somebody's page. When you share something from another, you'll never see me do that because then you have Facebook says, oh, that person's not original. We're not going to let anybody see their stuff. It's all about engagement interaction, right? It's all about adding value to the marketplace. So whether you're doing different exercises or you're sharing different foods or you're sharing different places you're going, you're sharing different things, uh, recipes, right? I share a lot of recipes. I share a lot of stuff like that. Um, but it's all about inspiring others to be the best version of themselves as you're being the best version of yourself. So adding that cash value, that value more so than you take back in return. So if I, for example, I had a girl message me tonight and it was right before the Zoom, so I haven't messaged her back yet. And she goes, hey, Stacy, I'm not vegan. I, I do like turkey. I've got some allergies. I'm looking for some really good recipes. Could you share any with me? Now, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, you know, eat turkey. So I'm going to Google some recipes <laughs> with, for turkey options and send her some, right? She's not a loyal customer of mine. She's a girl I went to high school with. Um, I, I, I'm getting nothing in return, but I will take some of my time and I will give her some suggestions and show her some websites and some different things that she can go to where she can find some healthy recipes. And so she can do that again on her own in the future, right? So giving more in value to somebody than you're asking for in return. That's how riches come to you. When you, when you rise out of that competitive and into the creative plane, Give everyone more in use value than you take from him and cash value. Staying in that creative plane. Give her the link to your cookbook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's made it real clear she wants turkey. So not everybody's ready for a plant-based lifestyle. That's fine. So in this, the rest of this chapter, they talk about being able to dream and dream big and to claim that it's already yours as if it's done so the thinking substance through all in all communicating with all can influence all and the desire of thinking substance for fuller life and better living has caused the creation of all things whenever people set it into motion by desire and faith and by acting a certain way don't hesitate in asking largely you guys, this house my son wants that we want is a step. It's a large step. But if you're playing small, you're going to get small. Ask largely. He says, do not hesitate about asking largely. It is your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom, said Jesus. That's huge. So what is your next step? What is the next thing that seems so big, that seems so large? It needs to be in the front of your mind. Fix your consciousness on the fact that your desire for the possession of riches is one with the desire of the supreme power of God. For more complete expression, your faith becomes invincible. If you fix your consciousness on the fact that your desire for the possession of riches is one with the desire of God for the complete expression, your faith becomes invincible. There is a possibility of seeking expression through all people and God wants those who can to do. If you can, Seek more, then seek more. Do more, become more, be more, experience more, have more. It is God that worketh in you to will and to do, said the Apostle Paul. Paul, Apostle Paul. <laughs> so you need not hesitate to ask largely. Your part is to focus on and express that is desire to God. This is the difficult point with most people. I want to really finish up talking about this part right here. So you need not hesitate to ask largely. Your part is to focus on and express that desire to God. This is the difficult point, difficult point with most people. They retain some thinking of the old idea that poverty 
as a part of the plan, poverty and self-sacrifice are pleasing to God. They look on poverty as part of the plan, a necessity of nature. They have the idea that God has finished his work and made all he can make. And the majority of people must stay poor because there's not enough to go around. There is enough wealth for everybody on this planet. There really is enough for every single person on this planet. The thing is, if you dispersed all the money that all the people have on this planet evenly out to the 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet, do you realize that in a very short amount of time, all the money would go back to all the people that think a certain way? Because they're doing the things, they're thinking the things, they're creating with their thought, and the money will come back. And the ones that aren't thinking that way, it's, it's just going to disappear. It's like you hear about the people, they've done research on the, all the lottery winners. All of them are tracked. The majority of them are more broke than they were before they won the lottery. Because if you don't have the money mindset, if you don't think in a certain way, you're not going to keep it. It's just, it's the thermostat in your house, right? If you want, if I want this temperature in this house to go down to 68 degrees, then I'm going to turn that thermostat down to 68 degrees. If we open the doors in this house and it's hot outside, the temperature is going to go up, right? It's going to go up hot woo fire excitement we're we're on the science of getting rich i'm reading this book the temperature's going up my team's growing everything's amazing right Woo! well we have a cold night there's a cold spell here it's chilly the temperature's going to go back down the doors are closed the temperature's going to go back down to what the thermostat set at right so it's going to go back down to that 68 degrees so the difficult point with most people is to realize that self-sacrifice and poverty is not pleasing to God. You need not hesitate to ask largely. Your part is to focus on and express your desires to God. Okay. That's your focus. Go big, big, big. Begin living in this certain way. Ask for more than what you think is even possible. Ask for more. Hmm. A lot of you having problems saying that. <sighs> I can feel that in my throat. You're not going to speak that right now. Maybe you should right now. Maybe you should be like sitting in your house right now and you're wherever you're at and you can say, I deserve more. I'm going to start asking for more. I'm asking for more. I'm going to ask for more. I am more. I deserve more. I'm going to ask for more. I want this. I want this and I want this and I want this and I want this and I want this. I'm going to begin, begin living in a certain way. I'm going to hold these pictures and thoughts in my mind. I am going to get the things that I want. It has been unto him according to his faith. And so with you and with all of us, it is your faith, your belief, and your thoughts that create your world. Your doubt, your fear, your worry, your comparison, your guilt, your shame, your resentment, your frustration, your anger, your need, I need this, is holding you back. If you say, I need this, I have to have this, I need these customers, I need these distributors, I need this money, that's lack, it's limitation. So it's a feeling, it's energy, right? I need you to love me, I need you to want me, I need you to be with me. Ugh, gross. Nobody wants that. That's a yucky energy. It's not a good feeling, right? But being open and receptive, being creative, being in the right place at the right time with the right people, that feels good, right? Sharing your knowledge, sharing your information, learning new things. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just read this book. I want to share this with you. What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? Why don't you pick it up? See if it helps you. Oh my gosh, I just, I just ate at this great restaurant. They had the most amazing blah, 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 blah. Let me share this with you. Has anybody been there? How can you become an inspiration to others? Inspiring yourself first. Staying in that positive space. Staying in that tapped in, connected space. Staying in the open, receptive space. Are you going to be there every single second? No, nobody is. The key is to stay in there the majority of the time, to stay tapped in, tuned in, turned on, connected to source the majority of your day. What if you woke up in the morning, and my intention for today is to stay tapped in, tuned in, turned on. 
My intention for today is to live in synchronicities, to experience these synchronicities to where I look and go, there's no way I can make this up. This is God. Did you guys see my post today about the piece of cilantro? I took a bunch of cilantro, broke it off from its stems, and laid it on a paper towel. I went to wash my hands, and there's a, a piece of cilantro, green, the shape of a heart. What cilantro is shaped like a heart? None, but God is. <laughs> there's a teeny tiny little green heart, and I'm like this. Are you serious right now? Like, I can't make this up. Love is all over this. Love is all over this. I was making lunch for four of the girls that came over today for my um, PhD. Um, they started the study. And so I had four, Courtney was one of them, that came over on Monday night. And then I had four that came over today. And then I've got another group that's still coming over still. But I was like, oh, love is all over this veggie pad tie I'm getting ready to make right now. Right? Those little synchronicities, those little things that say, that's God. Right? I find a penny on the ground. Thank you, God, for the abundance. Yes. Right? Stay in those moments. Stay in that faith and belief. Stay in that truth. Despite appearances, stay in the truth. Stay connected to the people that you know, not that you're needing from them and you have to have them to feel a certain way, but that you're sharing. There's this correspondence that you're sharing things that you're learning or you're sharing things that are inspiring you and in the turn inspiring others. You're adding more value than you're taking and returning cash. That's what happens when I talk about the boomerang. When you put out that value, put out that value, put out that value, put out that value, that law of reciprocity that comes back to you, that boomerang that comes back to you tenfold is going to blow your mind. You're going to get the house you want. You're going to get the apartment you want. You're going to get the clothing you want. You're going to get the car you want. You're going to get the vacation you want. You're going to get the shoes you want. You're going to get the socks you want, the underwear you want, the hair ties you want, the shampoo you want, the dry shampoo that better show up from Amazon tomorrow that I need because I just ran out today. You're going to get the things that you want. You're going to get to go the places that you want to go. You're going to get to experience. I'm going to experience the private jet. You guys, I got two emails about it today. It's happening. Do you understand? Where is it going? I'm personally choosing that it's going to the private Ritz Carlton yacht that's in the Mediterranean. Like take me there on a private jet. Let's have that booked. Watch that happen. I can feel it right now to my core. Like I seriously am covered in goosebumps. I can feel that happening. That is done. I can't wait to share that with you guys. I'm excited about that. All right, so if, as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, if you are not in the chat, please let me know so I can get you added to the Science of Getting Rich chat. We don't blow it up all day long every day, um, but we do share things, little things from here, time, you know, anybody can share anything in it, of course. Um, we share little things that are happening and big things that are happening. So if you're not in the chat, please let me know and I'll get you in the chat. If you have any other questions, comments, thoughts, feelings, anything you wanna share at all, please feel free to message me. And I'm looking forward to next Wednesday when we share, I share with you guys, my three favorite chapters of the book, chapter seven through nine. Those chapters are the secret sauce that magic that makes things happen and so i'm excited to share that with you um chapter seven is entitled gratitude to give you a little little hint but it's also i always recommend a great idea um, to go back and read chapters one through three again go back and read chapters four through six again you don't just read it once and get rich. You read it, like I told you, they told me in Arbonne, read it over and over and over again. Never stop reading the book until you get rich. A year later, I'd made a quarter of a million dollars. I don't know any other way to describe it. Just do what I'm telling you. <laughs> read the book over and over again. Accept the things as truth. Let go of everything else and just do. Just live in that action, in that creative, active mode and know that the blessings are there. The abundance is there and it is there. Have faith and belief as if it's already done. And number seven, chapter seven through nine are, are really gonna help to solidify that for you guys. So thank you as always for being on here tonight. I look forward to jumping on here with you guys next week. Have a fabulous